After many years of development and a lot of anticipation, Elite Dangerous has finally released the update that allows us to step off the bridge onto the deck plating of stations and outposts and into the sands of the moons and planets that populate ED's expansive galaxy. Hey guys, Morphologist here, and I've had my hands on the alpha release of the first phase of Odyssey, the newest DLC for Elite Dangerous. At present, we're at phase one of four that Frontier is outlined for Odyssey's rollout into the wider universe, which means that not all the features are yet present in the current version, but enough is at least here to offer a first impression to give you guys an idea of whether or not Odyssey might be for you. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys what exactly my first week with Odyssey was like, and I'll try to convey as fairly as possible the design successes and head scratchers that I found in this experience. So sit back and relax, and if you think I did a good job by the end, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to show your support. Unlike Star Citizen, when you start off in Odyssey, you're not going to find yourself in a hap. You'll find yourself standing inside of a station or outpost somewhere, just in front of the elevator turbo lifts that take you down to the landing pads. Stations and outposts with interiors like this are places where you can outfit your commander for doing ground missions and find mission givers who are physicalized now in this new update. You can usually spot them by the icon above their head, and they'll randomly talk to you as you walk past them, kind of telling you about a mission that they might have. You're looking for a job, then I could really use your assistance. Typically, by the way they talk to you, you can tell whether or not it's going to be an illegal mission. Clicking on them allows you to interact and find out more about what they have to offer. Mission UI is actually pretty slick. I like how it tells you pretty much everything you need to know, including where the mission actually is, so that way you don't go too far away from where you currently are. Although in the current alpha version, it's not working very well, and most of them just say distance or zero for the distance between you and the mission location. But that's a bug, and at the time of making this video, Odyssey is still in alpha, so I'm gonna be a bit more forgiving of that sort of thing. Now, depending on where you've spawned in, either an outpost or a station, the configuration might be different, but you'll have pretty much the same thing, more or less. The same sorts of amenities that you'll require for doing things in this update. First place you'll probably go to, though, if you're like me, is the bar, the social interaction area of the station or outpost, because that's where I've usually looked to find friends or people that I'd like to meet to do missions with. And it's there where you're most likely to find the most impressive view of the surrounding area. Here we're inside of a space station drum where you can see landing pads all around the surfaces of the interior. And yes, if you're wondering, this is actually the interior of the station. It's not some skybox. You will be able to see friends and other people coming and going from the station here. But more than that, it's a fantastic way to show off the scale of Elite Dangerous. Now, while you're here, you may be inclined to chat up a couple of locals, but one of the things I immediately discovered about Odyssey was that it lacks, at present, a way to communicate with people who are inside the station. Well, you can access a comms window through a radio menu. It's a bit clunky to access and isn't really that useful if you're trying to catch someone's attention before they run away from the bar you're standing next to. And unfortunately, I did discover that VoIP does not work for people outside of your own commander wing. So there's also no way to call it to somebody via mic to get their attention. For some of you guys, this may not be a big issue, as Elite Dangerous does attract quite a bit of people who just enjoy playing the game solo, but for people like me who enjoy the social aspect to MMOs, it's kind of a big disappointment. So while there are social spaces in Odyssey, socializing is a little bit difficult. Further, you can't actually sit at any of the seats that you'll find around these stations, so waiting for your friends to show up in an immersive fashion is also not really an option. So then when I tell you that the bartender doesn't actually sell any drinks at the bar, it's probably not going to be too much of a surprise. Instead, he or she is just a shiny interface for buying and selling items that you may have picked up on the ground while doing missions. Stations will also offer a place to buy, sell, or upgrade your existing ship. One of the cool things here is that there's a hollow viewer, though I don't know whether or not this is going to actually be usable. At the very least, then, it's a pretty nice set dressing. As part of Odyssey's discovery and exploration features, you'll also be able to sell any information that you may have collected while on planets and moons through your scanning device, which is a nice way to reward exploration. 
Just like the current version of Elite Dangerous, you'll also have a way to interact with any local factions through this Frontline Solution kiosk, except in this particular instance, they're adding something that I think is going to allow you to actually participate in these faction wars on the ground through a dropship that will take you to the front line. This isn't in the current version, so I can't really show you guys what this looks like, but it sounds like a cool idea and I'm excited to try it out when it does drop. One really cool feature that they're introducing in Odyssey though is Apex Interstellar Transport Services, which is a service that will take you as your commander from one location to another, either to a location for a mission or to another station. I believe one of the reasons behind this system is that they want to test out the idea of having people start off without a ship and work their way up, which is kind of a neat idea. The interaction menu is actually pretty straightforward and they've got two different types of maps. You've got your typical system view and this sort of schematic view that you can use to more easily select the location that you want to go to. Well, personally, I find it not quite as immersive. I did find it far quicker to use than the traditional map system that they've had in ED. Once you've purchased a ticket, you've got two minutes to head on over to the turbo lift to take you down to the shuttle. And just like player-owned ships, you can directly access the pad that the shuttle is parked on to get into it, which is a great way to get a peek at the scale of some ships in the game. But before you head on off into space to do your first ground-based mission, it would be wise to first make a stop over at Pioneer Supplies to take a look at replacing your spandex spacesuit. The stock one that you're going to be given isn't going to have a lot of capability. In fact, it's going to lack some pretty major tools that you'll need to complete some of the missions that you'll find. Here you'll be able to buy a number of different types of suits, like combat suits, scavenger suits, and discovery suits that have different types of tools that you'll need for different missions. And you'll also be able to buy a number of different types of weapons here, too, of two different damage types, ballistic and energy, which is quite similar to what Elite Dangerous already has for its ships. More on that later. At present, there aren't that many weapons to choose from and they're not very customizable, but you can upgrade them to make them a bit better as you progress through the game. And that goes the same for the suit as well. Your suit can also be upgraded to be a little bit better than stock, so that's something to also work towards. Pioneer Supplies will also sell a number of items that you might need, like med packs and ammunition, but these are things that I've found that I can also just find on the missions, so it's not really too much worth buying them here unless you're absolutely certain that you're not going to be able to find them where you're going. To equip any new weapon or suit that you may have purchased, you're going to have to find one of these loadout consoles that you'll see scattered about the station. Here you'll find a pretty familiar UI if you've played Elite Dangerous before. It's similar to what you'll see in a station if you land with your ship. You'd be able to find your typical missions here that you could find in your ship in a space station to do if you're not all about just doing ground missions. To edit your loadout, you just click on edit loadout on the screen and it'll take you to where you can see your character and a bunch of different loadout options. Here you can create a new one where you can equip your new weapon and suit and mix and match depending on what kind of mission you see yourself doing, either ballistic or energy or a mix of the two, which is what I would recommend if you wanted to do combat missions. The only really weird thing about this system is that you can't actually equip them onto your character unless you're in a spaceship, which I think is a really weird design decision that I hope that they think about and redo. At least give us an option to change out our suits in a space station somewhere, rather than having to wait to get into a spaceship to actually do it. Once you're kitted out and ready to go, it's time to head on out to your mission to do some combat if that's what you wanted to do. And in this particular video, I'm going to be showing you guys a combat mission that I decided to try out. To get there, you just go through the shuttle service at present or fly your ship eventually when that's possible. To get to your ship or shuttle, it's pretty easy. You head on over to one of the turbo lifts, depending on whether or not it's a shuttle, and that'll take you down to the landing pad like I showed you earlier. The whole experience is pretty seamless and immersive, kind of like Star Citizen actually. However, you may be disappointed to learn that this update does not actually introduce spaceship interiors, and there is no current plan for that to be added. Instead, you stand on a circle near the ramp in Select Board, and you appear on the inside of the ship. For some of you, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal, but for me, it's a pretty jarring experience to step onto an arbitrary circle and then suddenly appear inside the ship. It really breaks the immersion for me in a way that makes me feel disappointed. While I knew that we weren't going to be getting interiors in this update, I was still hoping for some sort of smooth transition between the exterior to interior, like maybe a cutscene or something that would make it feel a little bit more believable. One of the arguments I've heard a lot of Elite Dangerous players make though is that having ship interiors would actually be something for them that would waste too much time because they just want to be able to get into their ship and fly away, arguing that having an interior would just be a nuisance. Which I found a really strange argument to make because I found that the majority of the time that 
I played was wasted not in trying to get in and out of my ship, but instead in travel. Between Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous, I spent way, way, way more time traveling in Odyssey than I ever did in Star Citizen. And that's even doing long jumps in an Aurora. So I don't really think that argument holds too much water. But some of this, I suspect, still comes down to the fact that the distances currently aren't showing up in these missions. Even still though, travel on a single planet surface can take quite a bit longer than traveling between planets in Star Citizen, so again, it seems like a strange argument to make. Now one of the things I want to clear up in this video that I got wrong in the last Elite Dangerous video I made was that landing at an outpost does not actually require that you land at a pad. Here I'm landing on one because the shuttle took me here, but if I wanted to land a ship outside of this outpost and walk up to it, I actually could. One of the other things I was curious about in that video was whether or not these outposts would be instants. Well, it turns out that they are, but not in the way that I thought. They're instanced in the same way that many other locations in Elite Dangerous are. You will run into other players, but it's not going to be like a massive 200 person area. It's going to be more like limited to 32 players that could possibly show up at this outpost. Possibly more, because I actually heard that some people reported being able to see as many as 60 people in one location. Not an Odyssey, mind you, in the regular version of Elite Dangerous. But just like the regular version of Elite Dangerous, you'll also be able to select solo mode or group mode, which means that you don't directly connect to other players in their peer-to-peer -peer networking system, making Elite effectively a single player or co-op game depending on your preference. This is not something I personally like, as it's still connected with the wider universe. But like I said earlier, Elite Dangerous attracts a crowd that prefers in some cases to play alone, and that's fine, that's just not something I personally prefer. The mission that I've chosen to do here is a kill the scavenger mission, and you'll notice at the upper right hand corner the objective appeared as I approached the outpost. This tells me how many I have to kill. Right now it says 0 of 0 because I've discovered that there are currently some networking issue in the open play mode, or the multiplayer mode. If multiple people go to the same location to do a mission, it can cause issues with which person actually spawns the mission, ultimately breaking the mission for everybody involved. This though I imagine is a bug and hopefully it will be fixed. You'll also notice that these missions actually have more to do than just the objective. I'm actually searching around one of the HABs to find out if there's any stuff that I can pick up and sell back at one of the stations. In some cases too, you'll find usable loot that you can equip to your person, like grenades or recharge modules to keep you in the fight once it actually begins. Eventually, to fix this issue, I had to restart the game in solo mode to get the mission to spawn properly. The AI in Odyssey is actually pretty decent. It will chase you and they'll actually work together if you alert more than one of them. There's a possibility of also sparking an alarm, but seeing as how the power is off at this station, there's no way for them to send out an alert to one another, so it's really based on whether or not they visually see you shooting at them or one of their friends. Now, combat in Odyssey can actually be pretty fun. However, one of the things I found myself really, really disliking about it is just how bullet spongy even low tier AI is to engage with. Assuming that I hit pretty much every single shot with both my energy weapon and my ballistic weapon on the target and didn't wait too long before their shields recharged, the time to kill cost often more than a single magazine for both weapons. Meaning that without a doubt if I'm soloing one of these missions, I'm gonna have to actually search for ammo halfway through the mission to be able to complete it. One other thing you'll discover in Odyssey is that they've also adopted a very similar damage model as to what they have with spaceships, where energy weapons do more damage against shields and ballistics do more damage against armor. One of the things that I really hate about this system is that the way they've balanced it is that the energy weapons will virtually do no damage against a target's armor once you get their shields down, which means that you've got to swap out your primary weapon for a secondary pistol to finish them off. This damage system is so lopsided that you virtually cannot use a single damage type to effectively kill a target. I used this rocket launcher against this single guy five times and still didn't kill him. And at that point, I'm already halfway through my ammunition. Now I understand that this was done probably to make combat more interesting and diverse by having to swap between these two different damage types, but I think that the result was actually just a very frustrating experience for people who are used to other shooters where you can reliably use your primary weapon against a target and kill them. After all, the convention has always been for most FPS games that your primary weapon is what you use to kill and your secondary is only used in case you are stuck in a reload or you've run out of ammo. 
But then you might make the argument that that's just the way the Elite Dangerous Universe works. But then I would counter you that if that's the case, why didn't somebody invent a weapon where you could swap between two different ammo types as opposed to having to swap your entire physical weapon? Why not just have two barrels, one for energy and one for ballistic? I, I just, I don't see the argument for why this is the case, that you have to use a certain damage type to be effective. I could get that maybe energy weapons just aren't as effective against armor, but right now they virtually do no damage, so you have to swap out to kill somebody within a reasonable time frame. Which, like I already said, already leaves you with a really long time to kill, even against level 0 targets. But we're still talking early days here with Odyssey, and there is an entire phase of the rollout dedicated to balancing combat by itself. And so, I'm gonna have to give them the benefit of the doubt here that they may be able to resolve some of these issues that I've outlined with combat before it releases to beta. Overall, and I feel like it's a really solid first step. And my first impression here has been mostly positive. There are a lot of design issues that I outlined in this video, but with any luck, they'll resolve them at least at some point in the near future. If you guys are interested in Odyssey, the DLC is available right now for $20 on pre-order, and if you want access to the alpha, it's available for 30 bucks. But keep in mind that Odyssey is a DLC, which means that you also require the base version of the game. But what do you guys think? Have you had your hands on the Odyssey Alpha yet? And if so, what were your impressions? Let me know down below. Otherwise, if you like this video, you know what to do. Stay safe out there, Commanders. I'll see you up there in the stars.